A lie can be effectively communicated without words ever being spoken. Sometimes a nod of the head or silence can deceive. Recommending a questionable business inv investment, making a false entry in a ledger, devious use of flattery, or failure to divulge all pertinent facts are a few other ways to communicate the lie. You really aren't obligated to answer everyone's questions. Whenever a person asks me an antagonistic question, I never answer that question, but rather I answer the question they should have asked. That's why I, I group this under answer the right question. A decades-old sexual abuse and LDS church cover-up allegations now resurfacing again. At least six people suing the daughter and son-in-law of church president Russell M. Nelson. Jim Stewak looked through the decades-old allegations. Jim, there are claims of abuse on kids as young as one-year-old. That's just one of the allegations in this 79-page suit. Now, the defendants filed a motion to dismiss this thing. They want it thrown out. Their motion is 141 pages. Here it is right here. I read through all of them today, and the defendants, they are going to put up a fight. The allegations of abuse stem back to the 1980s, accusing a John and Jane Doe of an LDS church leader that held touching parties and sex kids as young as one. The suit claims after the victims came forward, church elder Neil A. Maxwell blessed them and told them to forgive and forget. The suit claims if church leaders had taken further action with police, the abuse might not have happened. But it wasn't until court records to dismiss the suit filed Wednesday in federal court show that the John and Jane Doe defendants are actually church president Russell M. Nelson's daughter, Brenda Miles, and her husband, Richard. In their dismissal motion, the Miles deny all allegations. They claim the victims only came forward after meeting with a psychologist alleged to be at the center of a satanic ritual scare back in the 1980s. The LDS Church was not named as a defendant in the suit, but because it involves the daughter and son-in-law of President Nelson, the church sent a statement saying, in part, these allegations of interference or cover-up are baseless and offensive. Law enforcement investigated this matter in the 1980s and took no action against the church or its leaders. So I asked the attorney for the plaintiffs, why file this now? And he responded by saying, because... These alleged victims now have a voice they want to be believed and they want justice for living with the shame and pain of what happened to them as children. The defendants go on to say that the statute of limitations has passed and that is grounds and a basis for this suit to be thrown out. We have put a copy of this claim, this complaint, up on our website, KUTV.com, if you would like to see it. It has been fully redacted. Guys, back to you.
totally free who is living a lie. Trying 
left and I'm doing my shit like. 